now what we'll do, I just want to talk to you. We'll do a little Q and A, uh, and then also just as a reminder, yesterday we did did the, the live show. We did ten minutes of Q and A, and we did a Twitter Spaces. It was great. There is a, a link in the description. You can check out the recording, and it was good just to talk to people who are in the comments all the time, but actually like talk to you, talk to you, and uh, we answered some pretty. That's some pretty good questions. A lot of things that were going on that you can't really do here on YouTube. So you can check that out of the recording. It's like 20, 25 minutes of that. But uh, that is it. What we're going to probably do moving forward is that once a week, we'll do Twitter spaces. So instead of you typing to me and asking me questions, you can go to Twitter spaces and actually talk to me. And it'll be a longer format. And we can do whatever we want over there. So that'll be, uh, I'll start this week. So we just did it on Sunday. We'll probably do it again. Yeah, let's pick a day. Thursday. Every Thursday we'll do it. We'll just do a long session over there. Nah, nah, nah. Maybe Thursday or Friday. You know what? I'll do a vote and you tell me which what days are better for you. Thursday or Friday. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are very time sensitive, but that is it. If you want to take off, take off. You've been here 12 minutes. Not too bad of a day. Now let's get into the little q and I'll answer all your burning questions to the best of my abilities and we'll go from there. So that out of here. Interesting day. Dig swimming, Dave. <laughs> Hello, Vicky. Please like the video. That'd be nice. JT's here. Gary's here. We can do a Twitter space about when to do a Twitter spaces. Des is here. Charles Kincannon. Charles, any updates on tax strategies for the end of the year? Yeah, we did a video. Let me show you. And it was it was all over about uh, tax loss harvesting, wash trading, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, let's see. Where did it? And just so you know, YouTube changed up some things. So now there's different tabs, videos, live posts, and stories. When you look for, for some things, just know that the Q&A, we split the Q&A. That'll be in videos. Um, but, ah, here it is. But for uh, the live streams, you have to click on the live stream tab. Ah, here we go. So to answer your question, Charles, it looks like this. So there's a video just called Do This Now. If you have crypto losses in 2022, hint, everybody does. I mean, if you that realized or unrealized. Uh, do this before December 31st. It was about a week ago and we had on uh, David Kimmer from uh, Coin Ledger, And he talked about uh, things to do as far as tax loss harvesting. It's, it's a pretty easy process. You sign up with Coin Ledger, which is free. You don't have to pay for anything unless you want to run a report for your CPA or your accountant. And you can see all your tax loss uh, harvesting opportunities. And when you take those, then you can offset some of your losses just so you know that as far as like income you can only offset up to three thousand dollars per year if uh you take a lot of tax if a lot of losses this year you can roll them over to next year and the year after that and the year after that also it's also a good strategy to take off uh losses or to offset your gains if you have any from uh, capital gains which are unlimited so we talked about that check that video out and uh, what am I doing? Here, let's do this. I'll copy it. Let's see. Tax loss harvesting video. Right there. I'll drop it in the comments. I make things super simple for everybody, trying to save you all time. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah, please like the video. <laughs> I have buy into in a U.S. and Indiana. That's good. Vicky's driving, driving and listening. Nothing wrong with that. Wow, thirty thousand a month for a steal. That's pretty good. Shrimps, <laughs> shrimps out in full force. Hello, we're not all George. <laughs> uh, happy Monday. I think, 
I need Bitcoin to 30X to cover my Zillica spend. Whew. Benny's here. Thank you, Benny, for all the things you do on Twitter. I appreciate it. Let's see. Let me go up here. Uh, let's see. And Nick is first. Shout out to Nick for being first. Yeah, well, it's amazing. I mean, hopefully YouTube uh, notifies you. Let's see. Yes. I can tell you it's an early Christmas present, my my opinion. <laughs> Why is Rob pimping sats? It's because I want everybody to know you don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. You know, everybody gets gets hung up on the fact that, damn, I got to pay, you know, $17,000 for a Bitcoin. No, you can just buy Satoshis. And uh, it'll be interesting as time goes on and we get to the price of Bitcoin at some point being, you know, back to its all-time high of 70, 69,000. Then maybe it goes to 100,000. People will always think to themselves, I need $100,000 to buy a Bitcoin. That's not true. You can buy as much as you want, just uh, as much as you want, can get into. That's why they have Satoshis. It's just interesting that in the future, you're going to be able to see like, wow, a dollar only buys 2,000 Satoshis. Man, I'm, I remember this video from 2022. It was almost 7,000 Satoshis. Amazing. Or less. And. Lummox says, if Binance does buy a Voyager, what would be our haircut? About 15? I don't know. Like these numbers. Some, if you've got. If you're buying it for a billion, let's just do some quick quick math here. If you're buying everything for a billion, and the total crypto held at the time of the snapshot was one point, let's just say one point three. So the total recoverable assets is one point three, roughly, right? And then they also loaned out, I want to say, six hundred and forty million, roughly to three arrows capital and that was a loan that uh, i'd like to get back so i don't know if they have to take that one back or they take a hit i guarantee i'm not going to guarantee anything actually but usually what it is is people would loan things to three arrows capital thinking that they get all this great yield because these guys were geniuses and actually what they were doing was well i don't know it, it remains to be seen exactly what they were doing because they're going to blame everything on sam bankman fried and, and ftx so Let's just say 1.8. So you got 1.8 minus 1 billion. You're looking at a you know 40% haircut, roughly. Correct me, correct me in the math department. But uh, I mean, I had zero percent, or I had I, I had a hundred percent haircut yesterday, so not too bad. Uh, how long do you think SBF will be locked up for? I don't even know if he's gonna chase. It might be some minimal jail time. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how bad it gets. I mean, look, uh, Bernie Madoff spent his entire life in jail after he got caught, but it was I think he's he was going for, I mean, decades in jail. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm happy with the Voyager bond. Now give me what's left of my crypto and I'll take it off the exchange. What's wrong with that? I can see that totally. Uh, Steven says, have to sell and buy back to harvest losses, right? No. You don't have to, as, as far as like tax loss harvesting, you just sell and that's it. You take a, that's tax loss harvesting. When you buy back, that's called wash trading and that is illegal in equities and securities. Thankfully, to date, um, Gary Gensler, who watches the show all the time, he there's no enforcement that says that things are, are securities. He believes they are securities, but until Congress really gives him concrete evidence, that he's just uh, regulation through enforcement. <laughs> Looks like someone got a case of the Mondays office space, classic. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. R I Re Joker. I think about starting a YouTube channel and advice. Yeah, it's super simple. Uh, make sure that you have a schedule and stick to that. 
make sure you just show up and just keep uh, keep going. You're not going to sound like yourself in the beginning. It's going to take you a while to find your particular voice. You'll probably watch other people and just kind of, you know, lump that all together. But at some point, you'll find the way that you do things and the way that you do thumbnails and all those stuff. So the thing I can just tell you is that if you're going to start it, start it. This is probably the best time to start it because no one's watching. Nobody's watching. So you can afford to screw up like whatever. I'll just be here. Some dude is in your pool. Okay. Maybe. I don't know how that's possible. It's a green screen. Let's see. Mm. <laughs> that boy's in the pool again. Hey, Tesla. Yeah, I'm still waiting for my ETH. I'm still waiting for my ETH and my five Bitcoin that are just sitting on Celsius right now. Roughly. Maybe it's four and a half. I don't remember. Jeff's got a good point. So far, the only winners in Celsius are the attorneys. Are you writing that off as a zero? You can. And uh, we're going to have Coin Ledger in and talk about that and their CPAs. But just so everybody knows how much Celsius is making, the lawyers themselves, there was a great tweet. Let me pull it up. Which shows you how much the lawyers are billing per hour. Now, oh, this is from a friend of the show, Simon Dixon. And... Uh, the partners are billing per hour uh, 1195 to 2245. Council 820, 820 Associates 685 and pair professionals. Wow, 295 to 575. So that's just happening. That's our money as they fight this legal process because for some reason they just can't get it together to come up with a plan, which is amazing to me because BlockFi did it within like 24 hours of them pushing out their. Bankruptcy, but uh, yeah, we'll give them till February so they can say, oh, we couldn't do it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not angry. I'm just a little perturbed. Yeah. So if I'm under your Roth IRA, me at $7,000. So yeah, I need to get my uh, my iTrust IRA and max out, which is, a, which is a pretty good time actually to buy things. I need a coffee. Had a rough, had a rough morning. Had a rough morning. Went to go play a little volleyball on the beach here in Puerto Rico in Isla Verde. Nice place. And uh, messed up my knee trying to do, do a little bit too much, but I'm okay. That's why God created beer and sofa. So you can, if you have an injury, you just sit on there and do nothing. Phantom mining. What's up? Been on your channel a long time. So that's good. A lot of people are actually stopping, stopping, uh, subscribing to the channel. And, you know, the views go down the bear market. It's okay. Like, uh, I show you. I have lost. <laughs> but this is what it's, this is just a natural cycle, you know? So people, people come and go. And that's okay. Like, it's kind of boring, honestly. Last month or so, I've lost about a 1,000 people, subscribers. And, of course, views are down too. But, I mean, it's, it's like I tell you, I tell people again, it's, it's, not, it's not that, it's not that uh, the price action is killing people. It's the boredom that is killing people. That's the big thing. Chopping sideways and... Going down 1% to 2% every couple of weeks is just boring as hell. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's okay. I'll see him in the, in the, in the bull market. Hmm. This is a good question. Do you think the IRS will be allowed to analyze FTX Group's trading history for tax collection purposes from U.S. citizens and U.S. registered entities? I think they, I think they do it already if it's FTX U.S. Um... I'm pretty sure the reason why you do KYC and AML, know your customer, anti-money laundering, putting your social security and your date of birth or something like that, is because they're going to report that to the IRS. You know they already know. So if you're an American citizen, that's just how it is. Sorry. And uh, yeah, so they'll probably look at it. But there's a difference between FTX International and FTX US. So trust me, the Department of Justice is is greedily looking at all FTX, definitely. 
Because if, if they want to look at and, and build a case, they're going to have to look through the financials. And when they look at the financials, guess who else is going to want to look to that? Probably the IRS. That's it. Would you ever have the developers for Oculus Wallet? Sure. I just, I've reached out to them a couple of times. No answer. I've asked them if they could deliver here to Puerto Rico. Nope. And uh, yeah, so I guess. And it wasn't like I was, I mean, I would have paid for the damn thing and just couldn't get it here. Ow. I put, I put my thumb down on the thumb up. Hilarious. Yeah, beach volleyball for me. Come to Panama. I'm already. I already play it here. I'm good to go. <laughs> now is the best time to watch crypto YouTube. Yeah, potentially, it could be. I hope Rob, you will run until our next bull run. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be here till the next one. I think I'll probably be doing dailies all the way until the next bull run. And then the time when I sell and get out, I'll probably take, well, I don't know. Like, I thought I was going to actually pull out a little bit uh, earlier and start to do like once a week videos after this bull run. But it's fun. It's fun to do these videos. And again, like, what else am I going to do? You know? So I don't really need to work, work. And this is pretty interesting to do. So I get to hang out with you guys all day, or at least an hour a day. It gives me something to do. Uh, I thought actually in the practice bot trading. <laughs> I just come for the view. It's a nice view. <laughs> Johnny says, my wife unsubscribed from me this year. Thank God. That's right. And Beardy says it correctly. The military shot just taught me to show up. Mm, should be a race team owner. I have no inkling or no inclination to get into that. And Random says, Rob, aren't you too deeply invested and just let go of the best period coming to crypto? Yeah, but I mean, like we're talking about videos. We're talking about doing videos, stuff like that. Like right now, and we talked about it yesterday. If you haven't had a chance to watch yesterday's video, which I personally thought was was pretty decent. And it looks like this. Let me share. It's this one. It was the 2023 ROI outlook. And for me, I, I just did a did a comparison between all the all the months for the four cycles. And we took a look at the having months, the all-time high months. The dip, which is the 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 months after the all time highs, and then the resets, and I was just showing people that you know, in all honesty, like this next year coming up will probably be the probably be one of the better years to invest because things are going to go down so low, just like it has almost every single time in the four year cycles. And I just showed you that in reality, in the past, you could have had. Like if, if, if you would invested in, in 20, started in tw Jan January 1st, 2018 to the top of Bitcoin, 2021, it was like a, it was like a seven and a half X. But if you just would have waited until 2019 and invested January 1st, 2019 to the top of 2021, it's like, it's like a six and a half, almost seven X. It's almost the same damn thing. So it's like the year we just got out of was pretty crappy this next one we're going to go into, we're going to see some, I think, some steeper discounts. And this might be the one to get into. Again, this is just what I'm going to do. But yeah, just take a look at the data. That's that's all I can show you. Okay. That's it. Well, he definitely got a deal on that $400 million cheaper than FTX was going to, going to pay. Yeah, we definitely got a deal. Dev CZ got a deal. Because, yeah, that's right. It was $1.4 billion. Let's hope this one goes through. Because if this one goes through, then the next one will be like, hey, I'll buy you for $500 billion. <laughs> Or $500 million, That's it. Take it or leave it, suckers.
That's it for today. All right, everybody. So thanks so much for stopping by. I'm going to go head in and uh, ice this knee. And that's it. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks for coming by. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios. Have a good day.